RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio RPV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And I'm Maria Soreo. Liz, great to be back with you here today. I always love being with you, Maria, especially tired, after this weekend. Yes. You had a busy weekend at Dodger Stadium. Very busy weekend and congratulations to the Boston Red Sox. They beat the Dodgers and uh, better luck next year, Blue. And you're congratulating because you know I'm from Boston. Yes. And Alex Cora, who's the manager of the Red Sox, used to be a Dodger and he's a fantastic person. So congrats, guys. It shows that we can all get along. and, and We and can. And, you know, and the, and the boys in blue had a lot to be proud of. They do. They had a lot and to be proud so of. An 18-inning game the other night was historic, so that was kind of fun, How too. How great so. for you to be part of that history in the making. Yeah, I haven't slept very much, but that's okay. Okay. It's but okay. you've still been out busy running around the community as well. We've been covering a lot, and you get yeah. some sports also coming yes, up Yes, coming up. Yeah. More sports with you. And you know what? Uh, a big story, Liz, that you covered. Yes. We are going to talk about the yes. big one, and are you ready for it? Are you, you know, interesting. We're talking about earthquakes and disasters and... And being ready. And being ready. And probably I don't have enough water. I probably have enough Diet Coke, but I don't have enough water. And you really need to have things like batteries and, and things that you need. The reason we're really focused on emergency planning here and disaster preparedness is because we were so lucky to have come to our community a woman famous for all over the world for her earth being an earthquake expert, and that's Dr. Dr. Lucy, Lucy Jones. Jones. Yes. And you remember seeing her on television. Anytime there's an earthquake, she was yes. with Caltech for 30 years. And she was kind of a calming effect because yes. this earthquake would happen, and then electricity would go off, and then it would come back on, and then there she was she on was TV. She was talking yes. about, about what was going on with the earthquake, whether right. or not there'd She's be an aftershock. She was very cool. And she came to RPV. She was at Ridgecrest. Mm -hmm. It was sponsored by all four cities on the hill. She came to address earthquake safety. She has a and book. And she brought her book, The Big Ones. Exciting. looks at all kinds of disasters. So we had a chance to catch up with her. I got my book signed. Can't wait and to it, see it, Liz. And really what Dr. Jones is focused on is um, readiness and, right. and prevention. She says the big one is inevitable, but the catastrophe after doesn't have to be if we're ready for if it. If we're ready. And a lot of us live in denial. So we got to catch up with her. And also um, the Peninsula City sponsored an emergency preparedness expo that I got to uh, check out. It was at the Norris Pavilion. I was there talking with um, emergency planners. So we're going to take, uh, take a look okay. at what Dr. Jones had to say and check out the expo. Let's take a look. I'm, I'm looking at the old events that I wrote about in my book to learn what we should be doing here in the future. So I'm trying to create some lessons by looking at what humanity has experienced in the past. Because, you know, we think, oh, we have earthquakes here in L.A. and we felt some, but we haven't had our big one yet. And it's to help people understand that the big one really is very different from the sort of big ones like Northridge. And that there's a lot that we can do to prevent the losses and convince people it's worth doing. This is a very important day for people on the peninsula to get better prepared for any kind of disaster that may affect them. Always have enough food and water. That is number one. But you also need a plan on how you're going to communicate with your family but also have a way in which you might be able to communicate with your city or municipality if you have something important happening in your neighborhood, if normal communications are out. You say the big one is inevitable, but being ready for it. I don't, how, how prepared are we? I mean, what are you concerned about? Oh, I mean, we are much better than we used to be and not nearly as far along as I would hope that we could be. So the things that most concern me in Southern California, uh, probably the single biggest thing is the condition of our water system. Uh, water, you know, who cares about water pipes? They're buried, you never see them, you just get the water in your house. But in fact, uh, our estimate when we analyzed the shaking for a big San Andreas earthquake is that it would take six months to get water back to everybody. What I want people to understand is that the earthquake is inevitable, but the disaster is not. And that we have choices to make, and those choices have real consequences. And just because your house seems fine, you haven't been through a big earthquake in, uh, in, on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And um, uh, when you're right on top of the earthquake, it's very different. And your building is as good as the building code that was in place and the degree to which it was enforced when the building was built. And you can probably make your building safer. Okay, as you can see, there was a packed house for Dr. Jones. Huge. She had so much great information, mm -hmm. and you can find out more about that. I have a special coming up around the peninsula airing this month on RPV TV with her interview and also a lot more from that um, expo, the Preparedness Peninsula Expo. Again, all to keep our community, you know, 
being aware and planning. And, um, and Liz, do you, you have an earthquake kit? We have, you know, first aid quick. I have kid. I have food in the house. I have water, etc. And um, how about you? Well, I have a backpack which you can buy at PVIC. They're great. They have batteries, water, that compact food, lots of things. So, so it's the interpretive. They're good to have. That there. Yes. All right. Well, yeah. So go um, check it out. Good Christmas gifts too. Okay. Absolutely. Now, Liz, another incredible woman in our community, of course, is Janice Hahn. And I know that recently um, you covered the state of the county address uh, at the Port of LA. Yes. Susan Brooks was there of course our mayor. Tell us more about that. Right, so our fourth district supervisor Janice Hahn gave mm -hmm. her second annual State of the County at the Port of LA. She had a really positive message overall. The county is in, in good shape in terms of having a balanced budget, but then she pointed out, you know, the opioid crisis, homelessness, all things she's working on, and just that the fact that she has so many cities that she has in her district, like our PV, right. and highlighted sort of what she does for our city, like our 45th anniversary. She was really great about helping us fund that, and right Right now, our coyote problem we're having, she's been um, helped us with um, dealing with that and stepping up resources from the county to help us, all kinds of things. So, I um, mean, of course, we all know she's very good friends with our mayor. She is. And, uh, she's Rex. That's which is great because they said they don't really agree politically, but they're like best of friends. But I think that's good that they don't agree politically because that really you get different opinions. Yeah. You know? So and it was fun to see. Our mayor was there, like you said, and mm -hmm. supporting her friend and supporting the city. So let's take a look at some of the highlights yeah. from her state of the county. Let's do it. Well, this was a little easier. Last year, I think I was more nervous because it was the first state of the county. But I think I'm always struck by how large the county of Los Angeles is. I mean, we're made up of 88 cities, Rancho Palos Verdes being one of them. Um, so, you know, and in my district alone, there's 26 cities. So I have 26 mayors, 26 councils um, that are also doing good work. And I just try to find out how I can be supportive and help every city be the best it can be. When you look at the Peninsula at RPV, what do you focus on from, from your point of view, what you can bring to the residents? Well, I know public safety is a big issue uh, for everyone, so I know I work closely with the LA County Sheriffs um, and make sure that Captain Berenger and the Lomita Station is always you know, paying attention and responding. We want response calls to be fast to residents of RPV. I do know there's a coyote problem in, in RPV. So we are working, in fact, in this year's budget, we added an extra person specifically uh, to that unit so they can spend more time trying to solve the problem of coyotes in Rancho Palos Verdes as well as other places. It's a big problem and we're trying to do whatever we can to help. It's exciting for me. It's exciting for me, for our city. It's exciting for me, for my friend. It's exciting for um, for her for to represent this county and I think she's doing a fantastic job of it. She's really helped us with legislation that we're moving through so that we can free up some much needed land um, for emergency services that we greatly need. And if, if we didn't have Janice and her connections in Washington, we wouldn't be able to move forward the way we really need to do on behalf of our residents. The county's been a great partner. Janice Hahn has been an excellent supervisor and an excellent par partner to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. A couple of key issues, of course, impacting our city. As you know, our city council is looking right now at the landslide and our planning for the future, what we're going to do there, and I think our collaboration with the county on that. Uh, any mitigation uh, steps that we take I think is going to be really critical. There's a lot of issues going on in LA County and our city being uh, such a part of LA County but kind of on the outskirts of it we're all dealing with traffic homelessness is a huge issue so what our city is looking to do is help participate in some way and we want to hear what the county is doing now so we can figure out how we could help out. Maria, one of the announcements that the supervisor made was about a new program that she has started. She announced it's called LA Found. It was launched in September, and it was set up to distribute tracking bracelets for people at risk of wandering off, people like with Alzheimer's, dementia, and autis autism, and any kind of cognitive impairments. Mm, interesting. And um, what they do is, if they wander off, they can be located by law enforcement through their GPS, their tracking bracelets that they're wearing. So important. And um, the supervisor said that she decided to go for this after a woman in Manhattan Beach had wandered off and never was found a few years back and so with her family they all helped together to start LA Found and you can check out more about on LAFound.com and already a few people that have participated and have worn it they've been um, they've been found by law enforcement that so have wandered important. off. So we're seeing more and more of this, more and more people dealing with impairment issues and right. memory. People and are getting older and yeah. dealing with things like that. So LAFound.com I, I was just it's a really spectacular new program that 
Congratulations to Supervisor, Supervisor Han for launching. Absolutely. Now, speaking of new, we yes. have a new library director, Liz, but she's not really new. You're right. Yeah. So Jennifer Addington, since this summer, became the uh, next Palace Forties Library District Director. Yeah. But she isn't new because she's had worked for the district for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so she brings a lot to the table. And I, I sat with her to talk about her plans and, of course, the exciting new plans right now. They're building a new teen center, yes. Teen Annex. And uh, we took a look at sort of what's going on with that, her challenges, and also you might be um, surprised by what her favorite books are to read. So let's, let's hear from Jennifer. I have been with the district for quite some time. I actually started here in 2000. I came in as a full-time clerk, and I worked my way up through the entire uh, organization. I was a children's librarian, an adult librarian, and I worked here for 13 and a half years before I took a position in Pasadena as the deputy director. I was there for about three and a half years and then was very fortunate to come back to PV as the deputy director. I was deputy for two years and then just this last June became the director. So I like to think back actually at a time maybe in 2001 where I was talking to another of my fellow workers and she said, well, what is your dream? What is your goal at some point in your life? And I said at that moment, I want to be director here. And so jump ahead 18 years and to be sitting at this desk and actually be the director of the Palos Verdes Library District, I mean, it's kind of a dream come true. I think I'm in one of an amazing position here because PV is already a fantastic library district. So really, it's my obligation to continue to do the fantastic work that it already does. We're looking at um, kind of revamping our programming with more of an emphasis on outreach. We're um, going to be getting a new library catalog. We've actually got a request for proposals out now. We've got a lot of new staff on board, which are bringing all kinds of new exciting energy and interesting concepts. And I think one of the biggest, really coolest things we're doing is we're building a teen annex on our roof. We've had a dedicated teen annex for about 11 years now, but it's always been off-site. And so we have this opportunity now with some parking agreement funds that we got from Continental Development Next Door and through the amazing generosity of our friends of the library and the amazing campaign that they put together to raise money, we have enough money to build the teen annex on our very own roof. If you were to give us your top five reads uh, for people listening, what do I want to kick back with this fall? Goodness, that, that's a tough one. And I'm going to promote a different service because while I do like to say that I read a lot of books, I listen to a lot of books. I have a little teeny bit of a commute, and so my thing is listening to audiobooks. And we have so many services where you can download audiobooks for free. So that's really my thing. I will admit I'm a science fiction, a um, little bit of a horror. I love Stephen King. Um, I love those kind of creepy books. Um, so I'm a listener of those kind of things. Um, I just finished a book called The Summer That Melted Everything um, by Tiffany McHaddish that was very interesting. Um, a little quirky, a little almost uncomfortable, but really, really fascinating. I would suggest that one. Liz, who would have thought that she would be a fan of scary books? I know. I thought maybe I'd see her saying historic fiction, you which never is know. I like to read. But, you know, she pointed out that she loves listening. And I've done a few audiobooks. I know you have a big commute to get I here to the do. studio. And you know what? I've never done that, but my cousin's always telling me, get books on tape, get books on tape. So I have to That's because she's out. listening to sports all I, day long I know. on the radio. You're right. But I think you should I'm try right. it. I should try it. You could listen uh -huh. to, you know, a history of, of the Dodgers. There, or or the, like the Lakers or anybody. Red Sox. Right? <laughs> the Rams, yes. And there's more to come on Studio RPV. The president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp, will join us next, so don't go away. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are.
And joining us in studio today is our very good friend who is the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. So excited to have you at the table with so us. Great to have Absolutely. you here on Studio yeah. RPV. Oh. Eileen, very <laughs> exciting because it's that time of year we talk yes. Citizen of the Year. Yes. And you do such an amazing job, you and the Chamber and all the people you work with. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Citizen and how you guys Find the people to honor okay. for the event. Well, thank you so much. That's a great question. I'd, I'd like to first step back and just say that I what I love about the Citizen of the Year event is that it really honors the tradition of philanthropy in our community. Mm. As you know, this is a very generous and giving community. Very much so. Um, and so this is the time of the year when the Chamber can step back and thank those individuals and organizations that give back so much, not only to the peninsula, but to the South Bay and indeed the whole LA metro area. So to answer your question, though, how they're selected is the um, honorees are actually nominated by members of the chamber. Mm. Um, we have a month-long period where we have applications out and nomination forms, and the nominations come in. They're reviewed um, anonymously by a committee of chamber members, our special events committee, and then they their recommendations go to our board of directors for, for their final selection. So we have a little sneak peek. Tell us mm -hmm. who the honorees are this year. Yes, And the absolutely. winners are? The, the winners, winners are. are. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, what was that? movie? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, the winners are this year, our honoree citizen of the year is Diana Heffernan Schrader. Mm -hmm. And I'll be happy to tell you a little bit about her. Um, our nonprofit organization of the year is Peninsula Seniors. Yes. And our community service organization of the year, and that award honors an all volunteer nonprofit. This year we've selected Los Candelistas. Who, Liz? You know I something know, I, about I, I have member. been a member. I am a sustaining member mm -hmm. of that group. So I'm very nice. excited about nice. that because yes. they do so much work for the community, as yes. everyone you just mm -hmm. talked about does. Right. Yes. They really, mm -hmm. people just go out of their way to really give back here, which is nice. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tell us about Diana. So Diana Heffernan Schrader is an amazing woman. I have come to get to know her over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the things that is so unique about her is she's really focused on, no pun intended, homegrown, unique to the peninsula, charities and philanthropies. She has been very involved in a number of organizations, but yes. key amongst those are the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, the Palos Verdes Art Center, the Peninsula Education um, Foundation, mm -hmm. um, of course, all of our schools. And I think the capstone is that she founded the PV School Gardens, which is an edible educational experience for children from um, really K through fifth grade. And, and that's in phenomenal. so many schools yes. now. Yes. 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 Yeah, we've done some we stories did. on that. And the right. key yeah. thing is, is mm -hmm. when they put these gardens into the schools, kids eat more vegetables. They do, because yes. they, they think it's cool they to have eat vegetables. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Pretty... And they have a curriculum that is unique to each of the five grades. And so the kids actually get to see, as you said, what they're growing and eat it and learn how to prepare it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just very, very, it's a robust program and very, very special. So she has her fingers in everything in important to our community. She really does. So she's really amazing and um, I think she brings people together through food and so we've kind of created a tagline for this year's event calling it community through food. Okay. And, and it's going to be at Terranea so you know. At Terranea. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You have citizen. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. other two Peninsula mm -hmm. Seniors mm -hmm. and then Las Condolices you and I are actually going to do a show together. Yes. So mm -hmm. people can meet everyone mm -hmm. and just find out more information about all of the um, the nonprofits because they're really amazing. Yes. So absolutely. Very amazing. Congratulations. All right, Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, ladies. Yes. And congratulations to those winners. Absolutely. And we have lots more still coming up here on Studio RPV. Up next, we're going to be talking pumpkins. We're going to take you on a great pumpkin hunt. And we have a very sweet story with lots of pumpkin treats. So stay with us. See on page four that the projections need to be earthquake next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday. Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Okay, we're coming to Maria's favorite part of the show, sports. Sports. And actually, we're going to also talk dessert later, Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, <laughs> it's it's football season. Yes. And here in the hill, we have PV and Penn. 
you know, big rivalry, but a healthy one. You had kids that went to both schools. I did. I had two went to PV, a one went to Penn, mm -hmm. and it shows that we can all get along. That's right. Two great schools. We bumps the programs. road sometimes, but and I have to for the say, most part, the rivalry is healthy. You know, I think it's, it's healthy had now. Moments, but it's, yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. And last month we talked to David Young at uh, Peninsula High about his football program, and this week I had a chance to go uh, meet with Guy Gardner, who's the head coach at PV High, and interesting because you know he talks about having a young team. You know, people graduate, they. Move move on mm -hmm. uh, but really it's about building trust with players coming in and uh, also you know the controversy about should guys that play football play other sports and really just an interesting conversation so let's go check it out and catch up with head coach Guy Gardner a rough start uh, young team trying to find ourselves and still in the process of doing that um, record wise we were you know, we lost our first three games, but I think we lost them to, um, and we got beat by uh, decent opponents. Um, and now we've taken some positive steps to, you know, get better. What's the biggest challenge for young guys coming into football? Trusting, I think one of them is uh, trusting the staff that we've been here and, and done that. And when the process uh you know, it seems to be frustrating. They just hang in there and do it. And, and um, I think when they realize that, that's good. Trusting each other, mm -hmm. trusting each other as teammates, trusting the staff. And I think we're still in the process of doing that. I think the more we do that, I think hopefully they're seeing the better chance we have at being successful. How much uh, or how many of the kids would you say um, the players play other sports versus the guys that are just football? Ooh, uh, we've got a good number that play other sports. Uh, we depend on those kids, you know, we, we push multiple sports. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about that. Like, wh what do you think that they learn that maybe other guys that just play football don't know? Um, hopefully competition, uh, adversity. I think uh, physiologically their muscles are used differently, which is good, you know, to not just do the same movement all the time. Um, and we try to do that for the kids that are in our weight room all year that are only doing football, we try to do different things. It's not just football. So we're trying to move them around. We'll play handball. We'll do different things. So, um, and plus when you're dealing with a school that we only have 1,700 kids, we got to share the athletes. And so we've got, we've got a lot of multiple sport athletes. And I, and I think, I'm hoping that's coming back. Uh, you hear more and more of kids that are playing, you know, more things. So that's, that's what we need. You know what? I think I love fall because it's like football and food and pumpkins and just fun stuff, right? right? Another great activity when you mentioned pumpkins is how about going on the Great Pumpkin Hunt? I love it's, that. Yeah, it's happening. That at was this, like my favorite cartoon, The Great Pumpkin. I love that one. Yes. Well, The Great Pumpkin Hunt is happening again at the South Coast Botanic Garden. And it's a really cool way to get families to the garden, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And look, find clues and find the secret pumpkin garden. Did you find it? I did. I went Ooh. on the hunt. Let's take a look. And so I had to find the clues. So let's let's take a look. Can't wait. This is our great pumpkin hunt. It's our second annual time doing this. And we have created a hunt throughout the garden designed to get families out here moving, getting dirty in the garden, exploring. And the big surprise at the end is they find the hidden secret pumpkin garden. It's just a great place for kids. They have a nice kids garden that's here all year round. Um, we like getting out in nature, you know, here in the city, it's hard to find places where kids can run around. What did you find here? A pumpkin. They are imitation pumpkins. We do want everybody to know that. And it's a beautiful little area. When you come and you arrive for the Great Pumpkin Hunt, right here in Palm Circle as you enter, there's a, a big sign you'll see that says the Great Pumpkin Hunt, and it has these maps. And you'll pick up one of these, and this outlines where all six birdhouses are throughout the garden, and each birdhouse has a clue. It tells you about the bird that lives in the birdhouse. These are all birds that you can find in the garden. And then you piece your clues together on the map and it tells you where the secret pumpkin garden is. I'm with Abigail and her mom who is going through the great pumpkin garden. What's it like in here? Tell us about it. Um, it is beautiful and there's grapes and there's fruit. They love seeing just all the pumpkins hidden and all the little um, decorations like the lanterns and the bird houses they think are really special. We usually come on the free days because um, it works out well for us. 
um, but we love how they have so many fun events that they didn't used to host, so we'd like to come start attending more for sure. Now we've had this new sort of bloom of, of philosophy happening here at the garden as well. Today we're the garden about get in there and experience nature and engage with every ounce of this place. And so that starts with the great pumpkin hunt, which you could do every single day. But we're also running kids club programs once a month. We've started a new garden circle membership program that has started to build community around the garden. So folks are meeting up for things like a farm dinner or uh, lunch and learn sessions or even just for yoga in the garden on a Saturday morning. We have a new piece of art that we've just debuted in the garden called Fuller and it's created by actually a local artist and architect by the name of Doris Sung and it's this geodesic sphere that's just beautiful. One of the things I love to do is talk with locals about what they think about South Coast Botanic Garden and you know as you know a lot of the locals know this as the old trash dump and of course things are a lot different today so we've got 87 acres that have fully grown in of garden built on top of this landfill and it's just stunning. Now, now Liz, how come they don't use real pumpkins? They don't use real pumpkins because in the past when they did, the critters, the night critters in the garden would come and eat the pumpkins if ah. they had the real pumpkins there. So therefore the pumpkin hunt would, you know, last about two weeks and then that About two back. minutes. And then this one though, so you, anyone <laughs> wants to know, it runs through the end of November, but of course, South Coast Botanic Garden, truly Beautiful, a jewel, all year, yes. all year round, go and, and check it out. Now speaking of eating and pumpkins, I know where some pumpkin real pumpkins things? are. You found some at Liz. one of the most amazing local bakeries in Rancho Palos Verdes, Italian like you, Amalfitano. You went there to check out their pumpkin desserts. I did. Just in time for the holidays. Yes. So good. Let's take a look. We're here today at the Amalfitano Bakery. I'm with Carol and Anthony. Thank you so much for having us. Now, we're talking about goodies for the holidays. Yeah. Tell me some of the things that you have. Of course, we've got two tables full and a case full of things that people especially like during the holidays. Yes. Anthony? Yes, right now we have everything getting ready for Halloween. Uh, we got our uh, pumpkin bun cake. We have our marble uh, pumpkin cake. And we got little goodie bags. Uh, a lot of times they get them for the teachers at school. Little pumpkin cookies, you know, a variety of cookies. And of course, our pumpkin pie, which really big for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then we have a small variety of our cannolis. We have the pumpkin cannoli, we have the chocolate, we have the half and half, and we have the original uh, cannoli, regatta filling. Now, for people that may not know what a cannoli is, because we're Italian, so we do yes, know what that is, yes. tell us what a cannoli is. A cannoli is a real crispy, crispy shell made with regatta filling. It's just creamed up with some chocolate chips. How many pumpkin pies do you go through during a season, do you think, Carol? Oh. Season, we go maybe between five, 550. Just the pumpkin. We also make a pumpkin chiffon pie. Really light, fluffy. It's, it's like the kind of pie you want to eat after Thanksgiving. I know that you've had customers that have been here for years and years and years, so how early do they have to actually put their orders in for the holidays? Two, three days prior is best. Cookies are one of the things that we run out of the the fastest. Best to place your order. Best yes. to place an order way ahead of time. For I would order. think you make cookie trays and things like that as well. Oh, sure. I'm the head elf on that. Now, something new that you brought up is you have a sandwich shop as well. Tell yes. us about that. This, yeah. This we make uh, all our sandwiches are belly busters. They're Ooh. huge. We have a nice big variety of uh, different sandwiches. Eggplant Parmesan. Ooh. And our uh, most popular one is the uh, torpedo. I have to ask both of you, what is your favorite dessert? If you're going to take a bite, what's it going to be for the holiday? For the holidays? Yeah. I don't know. I like cherry pie. I, that sounds kind of mundane. I do too. But that's I mean, secondary that's... for me. <laughs> it's probably the Italian pastry, sfogliatelli. It's oh, called. Just so it good. looks like a big seashell, a thousand layers of flaky, flaky dough Delicious. with a soft cream uh, filling. All right, well, you don't have to be Italian to enjoy the Amalfitano Bakery, but come down, get your orders in early, and uh, enjoy. All right, Liz, you didn't think I was going to leave here without taking a bite of this delicious cannoli. Pumpkin cannoli, by the way. 
I want to know, Maria, where is my pumpkin cannoli? Liz, at the Malfitano Bakery. That's right. We've that's, got to go get them. We've got to go so back. So delicious. That was a sweet story. So sweet I and can't so wait. delicious. What is your favorite thing to eat at the holidays, especially mm, at Thanksgiving? You know, I love like candied yams and things with nuts, and I love stuff like that. Yeah, I so like anything like sweet, really. Sweet potatoes, pecan yeah. pie. I love it all. Oh, pecan Cranberry pie is sauce. so good. Mm, you're it's making me hungry, up. Liz. I know. we got to go home and get cooking. I'm telling you. Absolutely. All right. Well, that was wonderful being here with you so once fun. again. Thanks yes. for joining us on Studio RPV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time.